All right, the law of cosines is very similar um, aspect to um, the law of sines. The law of cosines can only be used with non-right triangles. So non-right where that was very similar to our law of sines. And remember, so Katoa is only for right triangles. So that's important to know the law of cosines okay, is only for non-right triangles, okay? And just like the law of sines, the law of cosines is to help us find angles in sides, okay? So it helps us to find the angles and the sides in non-right triangles, where so Katoa, we can find the angles and the sides of right triangles. So remember, lowercase and uppercase letters are important, where the lowercase letters here are the sides. The uppercase is the angles. Now, I think some of you are probably like, wow, that looks kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, right? And even though we're not going to go through about how that came about, yes, it, is, it comes from the Pythagorean theorem a little bit. We are dealing with triangles. So you will see um, that the Pythagorean theorem did play a role in creating this equation. So, the law of sines, if you remember, I told you to find two pairs of like an angle and an opposite side and another angle and the opposite side. Now for law of cosines is use it if you don't have the two pairs. Okay, so I always tell people use the law of sines first. And if you don't have those two pairs, then you should be using the law of cosines. Okay, so if you look at this first example, I notice I do have a pair here. I have an angle and I want to know its opposite side, but notice that I don't have any other pairs. Since I don't have any other pairs, I only have this one, I'm going to use the law of cosines. Okay? Because if you remember the law of sines, I said you, you will have two pairs usually shown. Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, the first part is to identify the pair that you have because that pair that you have goes in for the C's in your equation. So the lowercase c would be your side. So I'm trying to find that, so I just leave it as c squared. The A and the B in the formula are those other two sides. Okay, so 11 squared and 8 squared. And notice that A and B do show up again in the formula right here. Minus 2 times A times B. Then we have times cosine. And I said that the pair that we know, so the angle 37, will go in for C, the angle. The hardest part of law of cosines is actually doing the algebra from here. I, typically, that's where people struggle with is being able to solve for C at this point. Okay, so first, okay, C squared is going to stay. I know 11 squared, we get 121, and we get 64, and we get 22 times 8, so we get 176 cosine of 37. Okay, and actually, I would then plug this whole thing into your calculator. Okay, so we get C squared, and then I plug it in. 20, 121 plus 64 minus 176 times cosine of 37. So I get about 44.44. Right? And then to solve for C, I would have to square root to get the C by itself. So then we're going to take the square root of that answer, and we get approximately 6.66. And remember, this is a side, so it's in units. Okay, let's do it, the other example. Okay, so in this example here, again, Find the pair that you have first, okay? If you have two pairs, use the law of sines because I think it's a lot easier. 
Okay, so here we have our pair, the Bs. So that means the those pair, that pair is gonna go in for my C here. That means 124 is gonna go in for my C and B is gonna go in for my C here. And then 15 and 20 are gonna go in for my A and my B into my formula. So I have B squared equals 15 squared plus 20 squared minus two times 15 times 20 cosine, I'm gonna run out of room, 124. Okay, and I would again, just type this whole right side into your calculator. So we get 15 squared plus 20 squared minus two times 15 times 20 cosine of 124. Okay, and we get B squared is equal to about 960.52 approximately. And then we have to square root that. So we get B to be approximately 30.99. Okay, so finding a side is actually a little easier than finding an angle. So these were both examples of trying to find a side in a non-right triangle using law of cosines. The next two examples are when we are trying to find an angle. Okay, so notice in this example, we're trying to find angle X, okay, and notice that this is my pair. Okay, so if we remember back to our formula, okay, I will rewrite it. We had C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. So that means 7 and X are going to go in for my C's. My lowercase c is my side. My uppercase C would be my angle. A and B are the other two sides in the triangle. So we get six squared plus eight squared minus two times six times eight. So just like we did before, plug everything in where it should go. Now this is where I'm talking about the algebra, okay? So when you're trying to find an angle, things get a little tricky. Okay, you can solve some of these things in your head. Okay, you know that 7 squared is 49, 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64. Okay, multiply 2 times 6 to get 12. 12 times 8, we get 96, and then we still have times cosine of x. Okay, from here, this is where things get tricky because people want to just add and subtract all of this together. 36 plus 64 minus 96. 96 is a part of this variable x. So it is different. It's not like term with 36 and 64, which we can add together to get us 100. Okay, so here we're just solving for x. I combined the like terms I could, and now I need to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 100. Again, I cannot combine 196 together because 96 is connected to the cosine by multiplication. So here I get negative 51 equals, don't forget that this negative comes down with the 96 times cosine of x. So this is just algebra that I'm doing right now. I'm going to divide by negative 96 and I get approximately 0.53125 equals cosine of x. And then to find an angle, you should always do the inverse. Okay, so when you plug that into your calculator, you get an angle of approximately 57.9 degrees. Okay, so first thing I did, remember I identified the pair. The pair was x as an angle and 7 as the side. I plugged in my points. Then I did some algebra. 
Okay, I combine like terms, 36 plus 64 to get 100. I could not combine the 96 because 96 is attached to the cosine by multiplication. Subtracted the 100 over, just like I would in a two-step equation, and then I divided by negative 96. So notice that I ended up with a positive here, right? Because a negative divided by a negative. Then I did the inverse because I'm trying to get x out of the trig function. And that's where I get my 57.9. Okay, the next example. Again, we're trying to find angle C. So I have my pair here. So I have 8 as my side, 8 squared. Okay, I'm using the formula that's written out for me right here. Okay, my other two sides are 5 and 9. So 5 and 9 go in for A and B. And I'm trying to find my angle C. Okay, a couple things. I know 8 squared is 64. I know 5 squared is 25. 9 squared is 81. 2 times 5 is 10, times 9, we get 90, times cosine of C. Now again, I can combine these, but I can't combine it with the 90 because it's attached to the variable. So I get 64 equals 106 minus 90 cosine of C. I then subtract 106 to the other side. So I get negative 42, which is okay because I still have a negative on this side. Then I divide by negative 90 and I get approximately 0.4666 repeating. Okay, when I then do the inverse to get C by itself, And then my final answer, once I plug in the inverse of cosine, 0.466 repeating, I get my angle C to be approximately 62.18 degrees.